Sea of Thieves' progression is entirely cosmetic based. Over the last six years, the number of cosmetics that you can earn has grown tremendously, although not everything added is here to stay. I'm going to tell you everything you've missed, what may come back in the future, what will come back in the future, and stuff you'll unfortunately never ever have. But you should have some stuff to look forward to. Oh, and I'll let you know of any cool recolors that you may like. Up first, we'll keep it happy. This is some stuff you can't get as of the release of this video, but will definitely come back, or at least is very likely to come back. Currently, Rare has only brought back the first five seasons of rewards, aside from the actual seasonal stuff like the titles, scars, tattoos, sails, and flags. But everything else is fair game. So in the coming future, you'll be able to get the following pirate legend items. Bell's hat and the mysterious stranger cutlass from season six, Merrick's jacket and sword from season seven, Flameheart's hat and sword from season eight, the bone hunter spyglass and jacket from season nine, the sovereign crest and Lorena's tattoos from season 10, and Briggsy's gloves and Bell's dress from season 11. All of the one-off items in those passes will return too, just not any sails, tattoos, face paint, scars or flags as I mentioned before. Other stuff you can look forward to is most of the parts of the Obsidian, Onyx and Midnight set. This is all the same set, they just named it differently for some reason. Some items will not be coming back unless Rare decides to really piss people off, but the ship set, fishing rod, tankard, drum, banjo, bucket, spyglass, lantern, compass, watch, speaking trumpet, eye of reach and flintlock will likely come back, since they are either game pass ultimate perks or twitch drops. Speaking of Twitch drops, these will likely cycle back through, added as Game Pass Ultimate perks, or go straight into the Emporium. Emporium sets will likely be the crossover sets, like Halos which were added to the Emporium, and the Ancestral items were brought back as Game Pass Ultimate rewards. The sets likely coming back as Twitch drops or earnable items are the Frostbite items, Rising Morningstar set, Gilded Phoenix set, the Twilight Hunter and Nightfall Hunter sets, the Eastern Winds Ruby and Sapphire sets, and the Rascal and Sage Sea Dog sets. Most of these have rotated through several times, so please be on the lookout for them. And that pretty much wraps up this section. Starting us off are some login rewards. This is a 50 50 since these have been brought back in some cases, and that did annoy a bunch of people since it kind of destroyed the meaning behind the cosmetics. Rare brought back several Golden Sailor items, but the ones that they did not bring back were the Golden Sailor hat and the Cannon Flare. These were purchasable for a limited time only for the first and fourth anniversaries in 2019 and 2022. They haven't been brought back yet, but I personally think they will. It just depends if Rare want to open up that can of worms. Another set of items I do think that will be brought back are the Adventure Cosmetic Rewards. In 2022 and some of 2023, Rare released 12 time limited story voyages known as adventures. These were cancelled due to the lack of interest, but each adventure had an exclusive time limited cosmetic. These were the following, the Shrouded Compass, the Jailer's Cutlass, the Hunter's Beloved Figurehead, the Saviour of Golden Sand Sails, the Servant of the Flames Lantern, the Mask of Deceit Emote, the Hunter's Repose Painting, the Ancient Warrior Sails, Stitcher Stitches, the Bell and Reaper's Ritual Sails, Briggsy's Compass, Briggsy's Mask Trinket, and Pendragon's Pocket Watch. Some of these items would be awesome rewards for activities in the game, like the Hourglass PvP mode or the Skull of Siren song, with some even being on par or better than the Pirate Legend rewards we see in the passes today. I wouldn't be totally mad or surprised if these were brought back. It would sort of break their intention, but we'll see what happens. As for the paid items, some cosmetics were given away around launch with selected purchases. The Black Dog Pack was a pre-order bonus with the game, and the Midnight Blunderbuss was bundled with the Special Edition hard drive. The Ferryman set came with the Special Edition controller. I'd be pretty shocked if these did come back, but I'm definitely not going to count it out. The next section covers some really ultra rare sets released for various time limited events and are vaulted forever, due to them being tied with very special occasions or grinds in the game's life cycle. Kicking us off is the Brave Vanguard sales, awarded for joining the Insider Program or the Pioneer Program before December 2017. The Dauntless Adventurous sales were awarded to anyone who plays the PS5 beta. Both of these will not be coming back. The Hungry One figurehead, tattoo, scars and speaking trumpet are up next. You had to complete the Hungering Deep event during the time it was live from May to June 2018. They did bring the drum back as part of the Hungering Deep anniversary event from March the 19th to March 26th, 2020. Although like the other year one items, they won't do this again since it pissed people off. There are no recolors of this set. They did this with a few more of these, such as the Bone Crusher Sails and the Forsaken Ashes Cutlass. And you guessed it, the Bone Crusher set is next, including the hat, jacket, dress from the Skeleton Thrones event, 
the weapons from the Gunpowder Skeletons event, and the ship set, scars, and tattoo from the Cursed Sails campaign. Again, these won't be coming back. Thankfully, though, there are two recolors. One hasn't been released yet and is seen in trailers, and the other is the green fearless version available in the shops for doubloons. As you can probably tell, the Forsaken Ashes flag, sails, hull, figurehead, and weapons won't be coming back. All were available for finishing the Devil's Cartographer commendation and purchasing them during the Forsaken Shores campaign. You can get two recolors for this, both for various Ashen Winds commendations, and the seared set is amazing to be fair. The Wailing Barnacle ship set, weapons, jacket, dress, and hat won't be coming back as the ship set was exclusive to Shrouded Spoils, and the clothing and weapons were exclusive to Cursed Crews and the Sunken Curse Build Rat Adventures. You can get the Silent and Bristling Barnacle recolors if you want to sell 300 shipwreck chests. Be warned, it's a horrendous grind. Another time-limited set, or partially should I say, is the Mercenary ship set. These were given out as part of the Year 2 Mercenary Voyages, with the Blunderbuss and Eye of Reach also being a part of this. The rest of the set is just being sold in the shops. Recolors exist with the Obsidian set and kinda with the Sapphire and Silver Blade set, and even then, they also have recolors in the Aristocrat sets. There's also the Reaper set from the Reaper Runs and Mercenary Voyages. These were the Wandering Reaper, Inevitable Reaper, and Shipwreck Reaper sales, the Wandering Reaper hull, and the flag. No recolors exist, which is a damn shame. I would love to see an inverted color scheme for this. We're still going with the Festival of the Damned items. These were the Festival of the Damned Sails, Lantern and Face Paints. These were Fatefire, Ghostlight and Skull Face. There are some similar face paints, but the Skull one will always be my favourite. The Golden Legendary set is already a recolour of the Legendary set, but it is confined to blinged out versions of the Ship Parts, Tankard, Hurdy Gurdy and the Blunderbuss. Players who were Pirate Legend before the 20th of March 2019 got this extravagant set. Obviously no recolors of this set exist because it was already a recolor. A forgotten time limited set is the Courage set. This is part of the Competition of Courage event that tasked players with playing the arena and then was brought back and extended with the Summer of Sea of Thieves event in 2020. A partial recolor exists in the Courage of Captaincy set, but this is yet to have come back as it was Season 7 Season Pass set. Speaking of the now closed arena, there's a bunch of cosmetics vaulted forever from that. There's the glorious and triumphant Sea Dog sets for completing various commendations in the arena, the legendary weapons for obtaining the legendary Sea Dog commendations, and the six arena ship sets. These are never coming back, and I think rightly so. The arena community would go ape shit, as if they're not angry enough already. There are no recolors, but I would like to see a green recolor of the triumphant Sea Dog set. Moving back to the event stuff, you could earn the legacy of Golden Sand sales by linking your Twitter account to the Sea of Thieves social swag website and posting a tweet containing either hashtag save golden sands or hashtag ruin golden sands by 9am UTC on the 9th of June 2022. These are a slight change from the savior of golden sand sales, so you're not really missing much. Sticking with more event stuff, the defaced Reaper's Mark sales, the Gold Hoarder Skull and Bullion Crown Trinkets were exclusive to the Hoarder's Hunt mystery and will not be coming back. While this video has been somewhat doom and gloom, time limited cosmetics aren't inherently a bad thing, but come with lots of issues for both those who earn them and those who miss out. It is important to note that the early cosmetics were always marketed as a reward for those who took part in certain events and to thank early adopters of the game, both before and after launch. It was designed so people could see a cosmetic and go, that guy's been playing since Hungering Deep, since Curse Sales, he did that stupid fishing event, etc, etc. But when you bring these cosmetics back, it takes away from the story of how it was earned. Did this guy play during the Hungering Deep, or did he have to shoot a skeleton ship with three cannonballs on a random week in 2023? While FOMO is a thing that plagues this industry as many live service games are always trying to grab your attention, it's okay if handled correctly. Just okay though. The best solution for anyone is to always rely on recolors. That way people aren't being barred from earning a cosmetic model that they like, and others don't have their achievements devalued. A good example of this was the Dauntless Adventurer sales. These are a reskin of the Vanguard sales, and no one has an issue with them. Well, aside from the fact you can't equip these on PC or Xbox, but I digress. No one moans about the Bone Crusher, Courage of Captaincy, Mysterious Stranger, and so on and so forth. A bad example is just releasing four old anniversary cosmetics and releasing one new one to celebrate the fifth anniversary. Rare should have released a silver variant of all of these, that way everyone gets access to an awesome cosmetic, and the old stuff is preserved. I and 99% of people would have no issue with them bringing back the Hungering Deep items if they just recolored them. 
Hell, imagine if they were brought back in each colour of Megalodon. Yeah, the Ancient Terror would be the coolest one, but at least the Hungering One stuff is still prestigious for being the original. It would feel fresh for everyone who didn't play in May 2018. Yes, that was six years ago. If you're just joining the game, Rare has moved away from FOMO and do specify when things are going to return. 99% of the stuff they add now is in the Emporium. Sorry, I mean permanent. I got my scripts mixed up. What stuff on the list should come back? Be as controversial as you like in the comments. I'll leave a hot take or two in there as well.